Hi, my name is Ted with Legacy Brand Leather. This week I'm crafting a leather hand sanitizer holster because why not? I'm always looking to try new things and I haven't crafted a holster like this before. So let's get to it. All right, first off, we're gonna start with our leather. We're using a medium brown harness leather from Wick and Greg. It's two to three ounces thick. And I'm gonna use my template to just cut out the rough size so I can start tracing on the leather. Just gonna be tracing with an awl. I find that I get a nice uh, mark on the leather by using an awl when I'm gonna be tracing around my templates. And uh, make sure you go around the templates while holding it in place. I like to use my hands sometimes, I'll use a weight. Uh, and don't forget to trace the interior sections of the piece. And from there, I'm gonna trace the second piece. The markings on those templates are gonna designate either stitching lines or a fold line, which you'll see in a bit later. From there, it's just cutting it out. Here, I'm using a rotary knife, uh, but you can also use a utility knife, a box cutter, uh, anything that you have on hand to cut your pieces out. And uh, then I have to find my, where is it, where is it, where is it? Br brass, there it is, yeah, got it. And uh, for those nice corners, it's nice to have a, uh, a knife that's not the rotary cutter to get into some of those tight corners there. And then I'm gonna be tracing out the piece with the knife. I don't recommend going through the entire leather in one go, uh, unless you have a very sharp blade like this Japanese knife. Uh, I can cut through leather very easily, but uh, I haven't sharpened my brass knife in a while. So um, I'm gonna use my Japanese knife here. What I'm doing here is just marking the registration holes for where the box is gonna be stitched onto the, the back piece. From there, just glue the pieces together. Today I'm using Eco Weld. I find it's a really nice glue that doesn't have any sort of toxic smell or anything like that to it. And just make sure you line that up just right and set that up. Uh, you can use one of these fancy tools or you could put a book on it or just use your hands to ensure that the entire piece is glued up. Uh, you don't have to use something like this, but it's kind of nice once in a while. Here I'm just going to be bending the piece together uh, to make sure that the, the actual box section will fold up nicely and have a nice shape to it. Right there I'm going to be marking the fold line. That's a little dotted line I have there on the template. And here I'm using a bone folder to get that crease against the straight edge. Uh, kind of helps out a lot. You can use your hands though. You don't have to use one of these tools, um, but it definitely helps out to have something nice uh, to make that crease in the leather. And from there, when you have that done, here's just the registration again, registration dots I'm marking again on the actual box that's going to line up with the registration on the actual back piece. Uh, that helps out a lot so that things don't get out of hand or go a little too awry. Then it's just a matter of adding your stitch groove. Uh, I'm using a wing divider here. I actually should have done that before I made the creases. It was kind of difficult uh, since I had already relaxed the leather. Didn't quite want to line up right. Then you're just gonna want to add the stitching grooves on the back piece as well. This can be a little difficult around those corners, but just take your time, you'll get through it. From there, I'm just going to add the registration forward. The box is going to sit on the actual back piece. This helps out a lot so that I don't place it in the wrong spot. And here I'm going to be marking the registration through the, the template on the actual back piece. It definitely makes it a lot easier so that things don't get out of hand and just get placed in random spots on the back piece when I glue it up. Didn't get a good shot of that right there, but I'm putting some uh, sanding in on the actual leather so that the glue has something to adhere to. So just sand that on the top and then add your glue to it and glue to the box and then just glue it up. I'm using a bone folder to get in those nooks and crannies to make sure that everything lines up right. And once you're done with that, you can start adding your stitching holes. Here I'm using some KS Blade Punch pricking irons. These are very nice and have a nice slanted uh, sort of diamond look to them and that helps out with the actual stitch direction as they sit on the leather. Get that nice uh, stitching slant to it that I really, really like. Once you've gone around the entire piece, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get the interior spots for the actual box. You don't wanna forget those. And once you're done with both sides of that, you're gonna be stitching it up. Today I'm using some Venomo number no. five MBT brown thread. I've actually been liking more the thinner thread lately. Sometimes the thicker thread 
can either look a little chunky or look a little gummy depending on what select brand I'm using. Here I like that thinner thread, I think it kind of shines really nicely. I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to see the whole thing. Yeah, make sure you go around the entire piece and cut enough thread. I like to do three times the entire length around the piece. That will compensate for some of the thickness here or there, but you can get more exact measurements. Sometimes have a bit left over, but I like to be more safe than sorry. Don't forget to stitch the uh, center box piece. It's not too hard to do, but once you're done with that, you're going to want to burn off the thread there, as you can see. Stamp it down so it's not too visible. It's going to be facing the back, so I'm not too worried about that. Here I'm using a rotary hole punch to punch out that uh, hole for the belt loop to fit through. I don't have a punch that's going to be the exact size, so I'm going to punch out the smaller holes and needs a knife to cut from one hole to the other hole. You can use a box knife or a brass knife if you wanted to cut this. I'm using a Japanese skiving knife because it's super sharp right now. This just comes out super clean. I can go straight down on it and get a nice cut on that. From there, that's pretty much it. Uh, then we're going to move on to sanding. I like to go through a number of grits, starting with uh, 400 and going all the way up through 800, 1000, 2000, 3000, depending on how I'm feeling. Sometimes it's overkill, but I like to have a nice soft edge before I go and bevel. Here I'm beveling with a zero beveler. And make sure you go around the entire piece, both the top and the bottom. The bottom was kind of tricky, so I had to go to the edge of my workbench, but once I had figured that out, it was quite easy from there. Beyond that, uh, I'm going to start uh, polishing the edges with some tokenol, uh, just tokenol and some canvas. I find that the tokenol works really, really well. I do a couple coats of that uh, using the canvas in between to get some nice burnishing and polishing. Before I used to use gum tragacanth, but I find that the tokenol has a, a nicer finish to it once I've done that. You can use beeswax as well, but this is for my own personal use, just for fun. So I'm not going to do that in this project, I just kind of wanted to do a quick project here. No beeswax today, no other wax on this project. Other than that, that's it. Gonna do a couple of test stretches here to make sure that the whole thing fit nicely. But uh, yeah, there it is. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm not offering this template because most of these bottles are, well, different sizes. This was purely for fun and for the experience of trying something that I'm not familiar with. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you enjoyed it so much, please consider subscribing. This shows me that you want to see more videos and more content like this. I wanted to take a second to talk about the current state of things right now. Please take care of yourselves. Look to your local and state governments for the uh, stay at home and self quarantine guidelines and practice social distancing. I wanted to thank all those who are working right now, whether that's doctors, nurses, surgeons, bus drivers, taxi drivers, coffee shop owners, baristas, restaurant workers, all of those who are working right now and who I can't remember off the top of my head. I wanted to thank you for your resilience and for putting your health on the line for others. This is not my full-time job. When I'm not doing leather crafts or making fun videos, I work full-time as a bartender. And well, there are thousands of people who are out of work right now, myself included. We don't know how long this is going to last, but if you have a few dollars to spare, please consider donating to the USBG BEAP. That's the US Bartenders Guild Bartender Emergency Assistance Program. This would help thousands of people who are out of work right now. If you have another relief program that you want me to link to, please put that in the comments and I can update the description and people can choose to donate. Thank you, we'll get through this. Besides that, I'll see you, I'm not wearing a watch, I'll see you later this week with a new video.